Boyle's law is a law that describes the relationship between the pressure and the volume of a gas at constant temperature. It is important to note that the temperature is remaining constant because if the temperature were changing, then that would also have an effect on the pressure and the volume of a gas. So Boyle's law tells us that the pressure of a gas is inversely proportional to the volume. What this means is that when one goes up, the other goes down. In other words, if the pressure increases, then the volume will decrease, and if the pressure decreases, then the volume will increase. For example, if you have a balloon and you increase the pressure on the balloon, meaning you press harder on the balloon from all sides of the balloon, then the volume of that balloon will shrink, meaning it would get smaller. Or if you were to take a balloon and decrease the pressure on the balloon, then the balloon would expand, showing an increase in the volume. We can also represent Boyle's law using a graph where we would graph the pressure and the volume. It is important to remember that Boyle's law tells us that the pressure and volume are inversely related. As you can see here, this graph has a negative slope. You can see that at low pressures, the volume is high, and at high pressures, the volume is low, again showing the inverse relationship between pressure and volume at a constant temperature. When it comes to solving gas law problems using Boyle's law, we can use the formula P1V1 equals P2V2, where P stands for pressure and V stands for volume. The one represents the initial pressure and the initial volume, and this is just the pressure and the volume you are starting with, while the two represents the final pressure and the final volume, and you can think of this as the pressure and the volume that you end with. So now that we know the formula for Boyle's Law, let's look at some Boyle's Law practice problems. So in our first example, we will look at a question that says a gas occupies 12.3 liters at a pressure of 40 millimeters of mercury. What is the volume when the pressure is increased to 60 millimeters of mercury? So the first thing to point out here is when we look at solving gas law problems, you want to make sure you check and see what units you are given in the problem. This is going to help you know whether it's Boyle's law, Charles law, Guy-Lussac's law, Avogadro's law, or the ideal gas law formula. Now, because this video is about Boyle's Law, we can assume that this means this problem is going to be using the Boyle's Law formula. But let me show you how we know that. The way you identify a gas law problem is to look at the numbers and the units that you're given in the problem. By looking at the units, you know what variables are present. 12.3 liters is volume because we measure volume in liters. I know that millimeters of mercury represents pressure, so 40 and 60 millimeters of mercury represent pressure. And the question is asking me to solve for volume. So when I see that the only variables present are pressure and volume, I want to choose a gas law formula that only has pressure and volume in it, and that would be Boyle's law. And we know the formula for Boyle's law is P1V1 equals P2V2. So now that I know the formula that I need to use to solve this problem, I need to identify what numbers in the problem represent the different variables. So I'll start with 12.3 liters. It's telling me that a gas occupies 12.3 liters at a pressure of 40 millimeters of mercury. 12.3 liters is going to represent V1. I know that it represents volume, again, because the unit is liters. I know that millimeters of mercury is a unit for pressure, so 40 millimeters of mercury will represent P1. The question is asking what is the volume, so that tells me I'm going to solve for V2. And then the question continues on and says, when the pressure is increased to 60 millimeters of mercury. Again, I know millimeters of mercury is related to pressure because millimeters of mercury is a unit for pressure. So I'll put 60 millimeters of mercury as P2. So we can see here, the question is really just asking us, what if you take a gas at 12.3 liters and you take the pressure and increase it from 40 to 60 millimeters of mercury? They're asking you to solve for what is the new volume going to be? You can take a step back and you can remember that an increase in pressure is going to result in a decrease in volume. So one way you can check your answer is that you should check and make sure that your V2 is less than V1. So when I solve this, I can now just plug in my variables into the equation. I can plug in 40 for P1, 12.3 for V1, and 60 for P2. Now, when I put this in my calculator, I need to divide 60 over to the other side. So what this looks like in my calculator is I'm going to do 40 times 12.3, and then I'm going to divide that by 60. And when I do that, I get a V2 of 8.2 liters. 
So what this is telling us is that if you take a gas at 12.3 liters, that's at 40 millimeters of mercury for the pressure, and you increase the pressure to 60 millimeters of mercury, the gas will now have a volume of 8.2 liters. And again, this answer makes sense because it is less than 12.3. And when we increase the pressure, according to Boyle's law, we should expect a decrease in the volume. In our next example, we will look at a problem that says a gas occupies 11.2 liters at 0 0.860 atm. What is the pressure if the volume becomes 15.0 liters? So again, we want to look at our variables and we want to identify what formula to use in the problem. We're given liters, which represents volume, and ATM, which represents pressure. So because we're given only units related to pressure and volume, we know that this problem is going to use the Boyle's Law formula of P1V1 equals P2V2. Once we know the formula to use, we just need to identify the variables given in the problem. I know 11.2 liters is going to be V1, and 0 0.860 ATM is going to be P1. The question asks, what is the pressure? So that's what we know we're solving for. And then the volume is becoming 15.0 liters, so V2 is going to be 15 liters. Once we know our numbers, we can plug them into the equation. I'll plug in 0 0.860 for P1, 11.2 for V1, and 15.0 for V2. Just like last problem, I'm going to have to divide the 15 over. So in my calculator, I'm going to put 0 0.860 times 11.2, and then I'm going to take that number and divide it by 15. That's telling me now I have a new pressure of 0.642 atm, which should make sense according to Boyle's law. When I look at what's happening in the problem, the volume is increasing from 11.2 liters to 15 liters. And we know with Boyle's law, there's an inverse relationship. So if the volume is increasing, we know that the pressure should decrease. We started with the pressure of 0 0.860 and we ended with the pressure that is less than that at 0.642. So in solving gas law problems, remember it is important that you first look at the variables given in the problem. Once you identify the variables given, you can then choose the correct gas law formula to solve the problem. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like the video as this helps it reach more people. And here's another video to check out that will help make science simple.